på måndag. Little Sammy. more excitement, a little more excitement. Come on, this is going to be the one that drops the day of school. Woohoo! I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, girl. <laughs> Not at all. I'm, I'm a peppy as can be. I'm not the one coughing my lungs up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the number one Crude Mistakes podcast with Glenn from Love Rock Projects, KJ from Crude and Efficient, and Hovar from Behind the Mistakes. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so you got through that by just saying it as fast as you possibly could. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Then I didn't have to stop to cough. That's good. <laughs> so, welcome all to this uh, very special The Day of Skaper Festival uh, edition. So, some might be listening to this going too. Scarper Festivaling and seeing us in the flesh in just a couple of hours, perhaps? Who knows? Or maybe you just saw us and couldn't get enough and just needed to log on and listen to this and you're <laughs> welcome. Yeah, we're talking to us all day and then going back to the hotel room and thinking, I need a distraction. And there we are again. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's more than likely they'll see us and then need some veri- verification that those guys have really got a real podcast. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Define a real podcast. <laughs> and who was that drunk guy? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, hopefully people can tell us apart at least. Uh, I mean, we all look so similar. No, but I mean, I mean there are s- pod- podcasts out there that I know what the hosts look like, but I don't know who is who. What what voice goes to what face? Um, <laughs> so some people might have that with us I don't know, hopefully not I mean we could I mean we have stickers but we could also do badges maybe it's a little bit late to do t-shirts like the po- the pointing hand instead of I'm with stupid like that's KJ <laughs> and that's and then we have to spend the entire weekend just remember <laughs> at which side everyone is <laughs> not a t-shirt with your name on it but an arrow pointing this is and someone else and you have to stand in the <laughs> hmm, that, that this could be interesting. But I don't know when we had this discussion. I think it was late, and it was like one of you said, "No, we're not doing that." But I got this image of the Dalton brothers from the Lucky Luke uh, cartoon, <laughs> like the small, middle, and the tall one, <laughs> like uh, matching outfits, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, the colors also match. I mean, we could do podcast merch, T-shirts in the Dalton Brothers style. <laughs> prison prison <Yeah>. stripes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you like that one. It was the shortest one. It was this, mm, the in- intelligent one, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's Glenn then. And the tall one was a stupid one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, guys, what have we been up to this past week? We'll start with Glenn. Oh, okay. I finished the chestnut, KJ. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> How long did it take? It feels like for years. Uh, I think it was on my bench for about five to six weeks. That's nothing. Yeah. No? That's a bit bit much. I mean it's not it's not as long as a hell corder, but it was it was long enough for me, that's for sure. It's just about as long as having a tractor there. So you've been dancing around in the workshop? Uh, on Saturday, KJ, when it went, uh, I cleaned the workshop out before I started something else and was reluctant to start anything just because it had a beautiful, clean, empty feeling about it. But this is bliss. Did and Michelle come in and ruin it? <laughs> Not until last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to... No, we're not going there. It's not half pint territory. Carry on. <laughs> so, yeah, got it all finished. Gave it uh, seven coats of varnish in the end and um, sent it up on its way on Saturday. Looking spectacular. It really was. It really did turn out beautiful. It's a lovely piece of wood now as opposed to a scrap piece of wood. Yeah. yeah. But a good, yeah. Th- good thing you didn't charge it hourly. Yeah, no, definitely. I got paid in beer, though, which was nice. <laughs> so what did it amount to half a beer an hour or something like that <laughs> no nowhere near <laughs> <laughs> that's the nowhere question though near. did you uh, how many hours did you spend I mean could you go, go back and give us a rough number uh, at least 
an hour on it most days at least probably more in some cases so I'd probably say an hour of, an hour to two hours most days the odd the odd, odd time when I was recording when we were recording the podcast for instance or it was my edit week I might have missed a day but that's all yeah but at least an hour an hour a day well, that wraps up and then a question, I mean, you don't charge waiting time, but I mean, when you have a big slab like that, just keeping your entire workshop, I mean, basically out of commission, then you should charge waiting time as well. So then it's like five weeks times full days minus yeah, the weekends. So, yeah. I'm literally, I should have made a video on it just for the uh, title, shouldn't I do a black tail studio? I made a twenty thousand dollar table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that yeah. for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing another one. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but did you? Yeah, go on. I was just yeah, about so to say you, you didn't you, you didn't make a video. That's the problem because if you did, I mean, you could go back and change the the thumbnail and the title, but that's that's a bit difficult if you don't have the actual video. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, but since it's gone, I've been uh, I started on the scrap wood build off. And that's been that's been a lot of fun, going a lot quicker, getting some content out of it, filming it. So yeah, I'm back to enjoying myself in the workshop again, which is nice. Yeah, you've really been going at it. I mean enjoying yourself <laughs> in the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Well, that, Already. That, that being said, I mean I had I was thinking all right, I'm not going to be bothered about the scrap heap challenge, scrap heap, <laughs> scrap wood. And then I got the brilliant idea when we were at the cinemas with the kids. And then, of course, uh, KJ shot that down by, uh, yeah, Bobby Duke did that. And like, oh, God damn it. Then it's no point, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm on the fence again. So, yeah, we'll see. How about you, KJ? <laughs> Any plans for uh, scrap wood? No, my plans are still the same, and I still haven't done anything about them. So I mean, there was, was just the deadline is so far away. It's yeah, it's, <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, one of us uh, one sudden day be tomorrow. That will never happen. No, won't uh, <laughs> sneak up on me. So what have you been doing, KJ? Uh, what have I been doing? Um, Mostly garden work, because that's what needed to be done. So the the final garden divider that I've been making, we finally got that installed. And then we picked all the apples of the tree, uh, because <laughs> that it needed doing. Um, no ladder needed? Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> some laddering needed, because it's, a, <laughs> it's, not, a, it's not a well-formed tree. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to say the least um, and then I've been doing some progress on my um, welding station uh, video as well so it's almost ready but uh, DaVinci Resolve gave me a scare just the other day because before that I, I renamed the folder where all the, where all the files were in uh, so that's oh I can't find some of the files it said of course so, okay, I have to relink them, as you do. And then I saw somewhere that, oh, you can relink all of them by just uh, going to the the main folder and, and telling it to find them, and then and it will. So then I did that, but accidentally I I chose relink proxy media, which I don't know what it means, but when I came back to the video to do the, more or less the final pass to see where I could put some B-roll, there was okay this is the the clip where i put up the boards and then and this is the clip where i put up the boards and then i put up the boards and then i put up the <laughs> boards because it, the program had taken like five different files and just told hey it's the same one it's the same one so oh, it, it, was, it was kind of disturbing because like 90 percent of the files were okay but some of them were just the same one over and over again, <laughs> but luckily I could undo that by do it, by relinking it correctly, and then it found everything and everything fell to place again. But it was a bit awkward there for a couple of minutes. <laughs> thinking, do I have to redo this all? Oh, 
Oh, oh that's so much work. Very that, good. That takes, um, takes me back to my old computer, old camera days, that does. I had plenty of those incidents. <laughs> I've just lost footage for real though I couldn't retrieve it <laughs> yeah but it felt so weird but this is not the same file and I, I I took it out and put it back in but since it had the same file name resolved it yep I know what this one is this is this video but <laughs> no it isn't I, I'm very sure it is not uh, <laughs> yeah I, I, I can't explain what happened but I have a vague idea of that what that proxy thing is because uh, when I got the new camera, it had a setting uh, to also produce proxy media and like, what the fuck is that? And it turns out if you're like filming in 4K or, or some large format and you have a slow computer, you can set your camera to also duplicate all the video files in very low quality ones. And then you bring those in as proxy files and then you do all your editing and all your transition and all your layering and color correction and once you're happy you just tell him to apply all of that but to the high resolution files and then it can of course do the the rendering overnight or something or however long it takes but it really speeds up when you're doing the cutting and editing not mm. having to hassle all those large files that sounds reasonable yeah but I don't know why it did it, what it did, but... No, yeah. no way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the scary thing with using a very advanced and powerful program that you don't really know what it's doing <laughs> under the hood. <laughs> I have the, the things I know, and I know where to find those, but the rest of it, that's for someone else to know. <laughs> I think learning DaVinci Resolve for me would be two weeks off work. <laughs> Yeah, but think how powerful you will feel afterwards when you can handle it. <laughs> Have you got to that feeling yet? When I go back and use my old uh, editing software, which I do from time to time when I just want to do something quick and dirty, then I feel like, okay, this is a bit kid's version. Right. <laughs> because when you when you try to, so, to do something that is not just cutting the ends off and putting stuff in the right order, then it feels very, very yeah. like trying to make a, a blueprint with crayons, more or less. <laughs> I think I'm going to stick with CapCut because it makes me feel so clever now. I know it so well. <laughs> <laughs> I am the master editor. I know this program so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it serves your purposes, then it's fine. Yeah, exactly. But you, that is both an app for the phone, but also for the computer? CapCut. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people think it's just for the phone, but you can you can get it on the computer as well. Yeah, I might try that. I, I'm using, on my phone, I'm using a software called uh, Ucut. And it, it's really nice, but I see some of the videos that people put up uh, using CapCut. It has some more advanced features, so I'm thinking of doing the swap, but yeah. I need right. to find someone who is using it uh, and being in the same room. So show me the ropes because I can't be bothered uh, watching tutorials. Yeah, I'm considering <laughs> that as well. So maybe we'll do it this weekend. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. can so be if everyone is, uh, <laughs> I'll be tech support. <laughs> yeah. So if uh, anyone is interested in uh, a CapCut workshop, you can uh, meet us at the Irishman on the corner of fifth and fourth I don't, I don't know and glenn will have a presentation <laughs> ready <laughs> yeah i thought i thought we were going to have a booth at scarpa festival and... <laughs> uh, crap <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you make your own then yeah <laughs> no, the entire it. venue is our booth think big <laughs> yeah exactly. i accept beer and whiskey as my payment please <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I will accept payment uh, up until I can't speech anymore and then the <laughs> transaction is done. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds quite plausible. So, Holbar, what have you been up to? Oh, what have I not been up to? Um, <laughs> that might be easier. <laughs> yeah. uh, this has been quite uh, the week. Um, so, yeah, where do I begin? Um... I'll, st I'll start with uh, what is uh, recent to the memory. Uh, I've been driving a tractor. <laughs> um, 
So your dreams have come true. You are a farmer now. Yeah, I'm a farmer now. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Speed devils turned farmers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, speed devil, I, I don't know if I have a, a quotation marks big enough for that statement. But uh, yeah, I, have, I finished the tractor this week and then uh, I was basically putting off filming the final video for at least a week because it was going to be pissing down all week. And then yesterday it was brilliant weather and like, oh my God, oh no. And then I knew that I was going to have home office today. And I was looking at the weather, and all right, it, it's getting better by the hour. So okay, let's uh, charge up all the cameras. Uh, I found the old GoPro cam uh, camera and scared that to life, uh, and prepared anything. And like, all right, I'm gonna use my lunch. I'm gonna take one hour off. So I made a list of, all right, which sequences do I want to film when? Like, uh, I mean, twisting the starter key and uh, flipping the switch and pulling the handle. All right, I need to do that in the right sequence. And so it's not too much uh, <laughs> disorganization on the camera and uh, memory cards. So I made a list and I had the final meeting today. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to run out. I have one and a half hours. So I was like filming like <laughs> crazy. So the neighbor is probably what the fuck, because <laughs> of course, I started it five, six times, just sitting on it and then moving the camera stand around. And then I drove it for five meters, stopped it, rolled it back, film, moved angle and so on. And then, <laughs> of course, when I'm out on the road, I want to do it as fast as possible. And of course, in the daytime, uh, most of the neighbors are pensioners. So they are probably watch me going back and forth with the camera stand. And so, all right, I'll do a couple of runs up and down to get the entire stretch. And then I can cut it up later in edit and... Uh, what I've learned mostly is that the video footage of my new camera on a tripod 4K is brilliant. Um, my old GoPro Hero 3 Plus from two decades ago, um, the quality and the vibration <laughs> cancellation software was non-existent at that time. So the, the footage <coughs> is really bad but I'll put some effects on it and slow motion and music to match it. So it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I drove it to pieces. Uh, of course, a lot of screws did not have <laughs> Loctite on them. So I, I spread parts uh, up and down the road. Um, and then, of course, I finished off by running out of petrol. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, man I managed to do everything and I have actually been spending... The last hour before recording today, like putting all the clips in the right order. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Well, you gave us in the uh, CMO group today on WhatsApp a, a nice sneak preview of it. It looks fantastic. It looks like <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I've got some new piece of equipment as well. Um, of course, as I do, I was ordering parts of AliExpress and then I found this phone holder with that cold shoe attachment and of course I have this metal frame around my camera so now I have an attachment for that so I can also film with my camera but also with my phone at the same time on the same tripod so I just press record on both so I get both vertical and horizontal video so I have everything also in vertical mode so uh, oh wow but the question is do I do I want to edit that as well for the people over at TikTok, I mean, unless they start going over and subscribing on YouTube, I'm not, I'm not going to give them the gold nuggets. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> send it to me. I'll do it. I'll do it on my way over on uh, on Friday while I'm traveling. Yeah, we, can, we can use that as training material in CapCut. So we'll do it yeah. on Sunday then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but. Yeah, that, that's been brilliant fun, uh, completing the tractor and having it running. Um, of course, the elephant in the room is um, the video I put out. The funny one was because I sped up the, um, <laughs> the speed of the video, <laughs> so it had a cartoony feeling about it, but it's slow. It's very slow. Uh, it almost can't pull me up the, the hill outside here, and it's... Uh, 
uh, yeah, it feels a lot faster than it actually is looking at the footage in hindsight, but because it, it feels proper scary to ride because there there is a direct steering, so any small adjustment will throw you off the road. Um, the brakes are not evenly distributed, so once you <laughs> brake, it pulls heavily to the other side. Um, it's hugely... <sighs> How do you put it nicely? Um, the weight distribution is it's a bit top heavy, and that is because me. So it's <laughs> it's very unpredictable to drive. So although I did not break any speed limits today, uh, but it felt like going Mach two and being close to death <laughs> the entire time. It's almost like it wasn't built for a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it almost is. Feels like a toy almost. <laughs> You're always going to get that transition, though, aren't you? I mean, if you if you went from a quad to a tractor, you're going to notice the difference. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's true. And of course, I, I, I've been on online marketplaces looking for a, a larger quad engine uh, to shoehorn <laughs> into it because I got to do something this winter. And uh, what I'm really looking forward to is taking it out on the ice and. I can get a, a larger engine, I can get an engine of the same size but with more horsepower, but what I really want, which it doesn't have, it, it's, it has one of those automatic clutches. I want a manual clutch where you can rev it and then just dump the clutch because <laughs> the final footage I did today, all right, I had a run, I went in and I charged the cameras off for 10 minutes while I fitted the drift sleeves and then I just rolled it up on the road put the camera up and like tried to take it for a spin almost flipped it because it, it can't <laughs> make it spin <laughs> even with uh, <laughs> the drift sleeves on so uh, yeah uh, but then again do i need more horsepower on ice i don't know so yeah <laughs> you go through the whole malarkey of you know you know when people mod their car or their motorbike and you could go with you know the k&n stage two air filters and tweak the carb and <laughs> eke every little bit of power out of it <laughs> run it <Yeah>. on ethanol <laughs> but i mean it's still a 50 cc engine so i mean i have been looking and you can get like a 200 400 cc quad that's running but all the, the plastic is gone and it's a bit rusty but i mean i'm just gonna cannibalize it anyway so they're relatively easy and cheap to get a hold of so Instead of buying expensive tuning parts to tweak maybe a half a horsepower extra out of yeah. that, you could just buy a bigger one. But uh... <laughs> you just imagine the space inside this thing getting more and more, and the shell on the outside getting less and less to the extent where you just end up with a quad basically with a John Deere badge on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what I <laughs> what I have today. <laughs> But yeah, the the 3D printer has been running day and night, so I made some uh, accessories and farm hard. Uh, I, I really wanted to put grind hard farming on it, so that might happen at some point, but like it's too much grind hard, but then again, <laughs> <laughs> I think they would approve it. Yeah. So of course, uh, farmer at day, singer at night, because that is what I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> multi-classing yes, yes. Uh, it's it's a totally different end of the spectrum um, of course as we discussed in a previous episode I, I have a melody for the, the Hell Quarter Christmas song um, I have nailed the lyrics I've, I've been spending this week just layering on uh, several tracks of acoustic guitar um I need to put some uh, electric guitar on it next and of course I'm uh, I'm gonna have to uh, release that uh, also to uh, team recorder for their input or her input um, and then of course it's it's hard not having a vocal track to play off of so I now have sung the entire song and tweaked this as far as I can at this point but yeah so I have the entire song with vocals and everything. Um, 
And of course, you two lucky bastard has gotten a preview. <laughs> I'm the reporter from the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there was an unknown number calling me all day. I wonder what that was. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was absolutely fantastic, mate. It was just brilliant. Yeah, and I mean, I might not agree with that, but it's it's good that I now know I have everything in place. All right, I need to play electric guitar, and, and I'm going to do some bass lines. But that is easy. That is one evening. Um and of course i can keep the vocal as i have it today or tweak it but of course recording a new vocal is not that much work and then it's basically done to the point that i mean november or last half of november i can just concentrate on like filming all the b-rolls of playing the instruments and, and making the video to it so i really feel that i have now completed the worst part that i was really afraid could just make this drag into not ever happening so yeah i'm very sure it's gonna be a christmas song well uh, early in uh, december fantastic nice <laughs> nice it looks really uh, promising yeah, and of course, you have volunteered, and of course, now Kevin Sharkey uh, approached me today, his wife and sister, and uh, they have a choir going. <laughs> so so having a full-blown Irish choir on the soil, that's, uh, the possibilities are piling up, so yeah. I, I felt a little bit threatened when I heard that today, that they got a choir and were volunteering. I'm thinking, well, that's, that's me and KJ gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been replaced. Yeah. <laughs> Come for an upgrade. I was going to say, I mean, you, you need to bring a strum stick, of course, on Friday. Um, he can build can... one on, on site instead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have parts, so. <laughs> Do you know how to play one? A strum stick? Yeah. It's, it's not like three quarters of an electric guitar. I mean... <laughs> I, I can make it look good on video and then I can play something else over afterwards. <laughs> I, I think I think the fraction is half, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depending on how many strings, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's quite straightforward. A guitar has six, a strum stick has three, yeah? <laughs> At least. That depends on who you're asking. <laughs> so your uh, four-string contraption, what is that then? That's uh, That's basically a cigar box guitar. Oh. All right, you got me. I'm just going to admit defeat now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strum stick. Yeah. It's a strum stick. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, in that case, I'll, I'll put one in the hand luggage, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh... Have you made a foldable, foldable one that you can Ooh, take? Ooh, good idea. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I have seen a few foldable guitars on on um, YouTube and they just look like an absolute nightmare I don't I think you have to tune them every time you fold it back up y yeah uh, <laughs> that got me thinking though that that's a project I want to do um, <laughs> don't remember the name of the movie was it Desperado where he had like a, a guitar case uh, yeah. but with a gun inside yeah I would like to do something like that with a guitar case, but just fitting something ridiculous inside. A, a gun, of course, is fun, but that's been done. But yeah, flamethrower uh, or I, I like his friends. His friends would two. One had two mach, two with machine guns in it, and one had one with a rocket launcher in it. Uh, yeah, those were. That was a, a movie that came out at exactly the right point for my age. I, feel. <laughs> I was it explains a lot, lot. <laughs> yes yes that was way cool yeah uh, but i was just thinking making a strum stick out of a suitcase i mean you have those with the retractable handle and you just put the strings on oh, that oh yes and it's done That's really good kj <laughs> you can have that one and then Thank you can you play much. it as a trombone you can just pull the lever and yeah, <laughs> wah, 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 just uh, extend it and yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> slide guitar that you pull on the strings instead <laughs> yeah. oh brilliant all the possibilities none of the good ideas um, 
I also got a package in the mail this week, so I now have parts for my next project as well. So now I only need a bagpipe. Oh, <laughs> just uh, that small thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that's gonna happen next month, I think. <laughs> not the not, not the project, but getting a bagpipe. So, yeah. Our friend JMM Woodcraft can surely sort you out with a bagpipe. Yeah, I think. I mean, they're all swimming in them, aren't they? I mean, they get them yeah. uh, for from birth and every birthday since. I mean, they can probably I spare it, one. I think it's currency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I can just see him in the yeah. kitchen opening a cupboard and the bagpipe bag falling out and yeah. in the freezer is so like the bagpipes out of the way. You, and... you buy a used car and the price tag on the front is three bagpipes, a bottle of whiskey, you know and two what? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a bloody great section of that video. It's like, all right, I got everything I need. I need a bagpipe. And then I just call him up and like, uh, I need a bagpipe. All right, all right, give me a second. And he runs around his house and like the, the freezer and the cupboard, everything is just piling on. But you need quite a few bagpipes for that to work. And uh, yeah. But then again, if you have them, so then, uh, yeah, <laughs> call me. <laughs> so what project are you working on at the moment, KJ? Physically making as opposed to video, anything? Um... I'm still uh, fixing up the what I call the chandelier, but apparently it's not fancy <laughs> enough to be called that. <laughs> what? It's just a regular small light fitting. <laughs> it's a small chandelier, then I guess. But 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 I mean, it's not a light fitting. I it's not a it's a hanging light. So light fitting feels like it should be yeah f attached to the roof. I mean, fixed to the roof. But this is the ceiling. The ceiling, yeah. <laughs> It's the same word in, in Swedish. So, uh, I actually I I agree. It is a chandelier, but they're really small house. ones for a doll's house. <laughs> well, you have big dolls. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I I've got uh, I I actually got uh, some the uh, the light fixtures. What do we call them? Where you actually put the light bulbs in. I got yeah. some of those that I could. I just had to to sand them down, like <laughs> one millimeter or so, and then I could squeeze them in where I wanted them. Um, so now I, I'm just waiting on the special light bulbs uh, to see that they match, and then I'm going to put it all together, and then it, it should be done. Uh, so I'm planning to have that done around. I mean, probably uh, start of next week, and then I can and have the. Uh, the welding station video done as well so I can start a new project with no uh, backlog of, of video material oh, wow. to actually be in <laughs> in sync with myself for the first time in it feels like a year or something like that I was actually say try forever, to but yeah <laughs> and um, yeah it feels like forever at least so <laughs> that's that's my plan uh, so then I just have to decide which of the I think four projects I have all the materials for or close to all the materials for that I could start things that have been on my list for at least one year probably more uh, but I know I have I will do one of them but I haven't decided on which one yet but we'll see <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you follow Hand Tool Rescue, Glenn. Uh, no. a Canadian bloke who uh, do renovates old machinery. But he did a petrol lawnmower from the 1920s. Oh, nice. So I, you should check that out. Uh, there yeah. will be a link in the pod description as well. Because that was a beast. <laughs> was it an old cylinder mower with the rotary? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. And it was self self propelled as well. It seemed like it needed it because it probably is heavy as, yeah. Um, and it's from the good old days where I mean the machine shop made their own engines. It feels like not just yeah. slap on an engine <laughs> and call it day, but but it's really, yeah, it's an advanced build. Uh, so I just, <laughs> I mean, you, you probably should. Uh, I think you should have something like that in your collection. <laughs> Or even uh, better, I space. mean, 
I mean, you you are living in the mecca of anything steam. I mean, that's what Britain is known for uh, post industrial <laughs> revolutions. I mean, a steam powered lawnmower. That's that awesome. Would be, that would be awesome. Then you have to make a fire and put coal on and it's like shook shook and it almost jumps <laughs> on its own like <laughs> anybody gets in my way do the woo woo yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's the it's a gardener <laughs> <laughs> oh now it's on a break <laughs> you know i would pay okay. extra for that gardener I mean, he has a steam pa- all right all right <laughs> Here, here's take all my money <laughs> Yeah, please, can you come round and cut my lawn for me? I need a minimum of five acres to turn the lawnmower around. (laughs) 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 It would be great. (laughs) No, I don't. I don't think I want to go down anything steam-powered route. I don't think that's really me. I do. I have a lot of projects that I want to be steam-powered, but you only get these small models they don't have enough horsepower and then you have the huge one which you can't really move and then you have those like 10 11 horsepower single cylinder ones the the one that you actually can carry and use for something but they are relatively expensive and most of them are of course in the uk and having that shipped it's a no go so you have to find one and it's usually on our auction site so you have to uh, win an auction and then of course once you have won you have to pick it up within 48 hours so you'd like all right then you have to make an arrangement to get there and store it and then transport it home so that that's a huge venture so yeah <laughs> but i just on top of my head i mean uh, a steam powered coffee grinder of course now i'm gonna do the <laughs> i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna compromise i'm now gonna make a two-stroke one that's gonna be a a winter project because that is still something petrol powered but something i can do inside without having to go outside so yeah one of the things that is easy to get hold of here is the uh, old static engines you know the ones that just have pulleys you can either put a pulley on them and yeah. drive something or a pump to pump water that would be quite fascinating wouldn't it if you had one of those i mean you could i, I think i'd just automate everything in the workshop it'd be, it would be look like an old victorian workshop <laughs> with all the, <laughs> the the powered belts and pulleys and whatnot you have the free belts uh, yeah <laughs> like the work accident was waiting to happen that's the one it's all right. I'll uh, hire a small child to uh, maintain them for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's of course uh, p- period typically. <laughs> and what was it? My dad used to say that you peed on the belt when you wanted a break because then it fell off and then you had to <laughs> shut everything down to, <laughs> to put it back on again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, it was the Tom Lamb uh, channel, uh, Colin Firth's buddy, who, um, who's a farmer. Uh, he did a video from there was some kind of old uh, old machinery day he went to and there they showed some old things and there was one like a big steam engine uh, a stationary one with a big big wheel on it that had a, a uh, oh what's it called a steel rope uh, my steel mind just rope? Went, my mind just went blank what do you call like a rope but it's made out of steel wire yeah it's just a wire yeah <laughs> okay. yeah big steel wire just and he just yeah. uh dragged the machinery over the field instead of having a tractor pulling oh, it yeah, so he yeah. had that at one yeah. end and he's just and he's pulled it that looked <laughs> bloody awesome yeah. scary that, as fuck yeah. but <laughs> i think they were the first powered machines to revolutionize farming yeah i've seen I've seen someone use like an old steam powered tractor and they are, they have so much torque at so low RPM and they just hooked a lot of modern equipment onto them. And then they had a modern tractor going next by. And I mean, it it pulled like 10 times the equipment that the modern tractor could use. But of (laughs) course, being coal fired, it's not very practical (laughs) or comfortable. (laughs) It was jumping all over and 
when it was in neutral, just the movement of the cylinders, it, it made it rock back and forth around a meter, just standing there on <laughs> idle. And that I remember my, my sister um, and her husband, once a year they go to like a fair in Sweden where they do like old crafts. Uh, and of course they also have a div division there with old stationary engines. And one of them were like, I think they call them hit and miss engines because the the spark generator is not it's dependent on the revolution so it like it gives spark two three times and then it just goes for uh, a few seconds and then when the rpm starts to drop then it just fires a couple of times again so it's it's <laughs> really it sounds like it's hit and miss um but this one engine it was standing there and like foom 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 and the ground was shaking and it was of course it's been raining for a week so the ground was saturated in water so it was a bit soggy and you can actually see the waves in the ground from the engine <laughs> like up five or six meters away the ground was actually like making waves <laughs> like water it was surreal but it was really cool of course um so yeah <laughs> And some old guys were like smoking pipe and like <laughs> and then slapping it in oil and uh, <laughs> grease and yeah, <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the, those old timers that you, that you have to befriend because they're the ones who know how to start and maintain those machines. And when they die off, there's no one who can do it anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah, but then you have to be social. Yeah, and then suddenly you you end up having an old stationary engine outside your house, and uh, every Sunday you go out and like, uh, oh, now the neighbors had it again. Fum, 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 <laughs> smoke and sound, and then you have to start smoking a pipe, and you have to wear those <laughs> linen clothing that's naturally dyed, and yeah, well, oh. <laughs> if you get if you get a stationary engine, what you need to do then is get a trailer for your car. A nice little trolley for your stationary engine, and you take it to shows every weekend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you sit round and look at other people's stationary engines. <laughs> you just summed it up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like retirement. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think I'll, will be our equivalent of the stationary engine? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we can focus on one thing, can we nowadays? That's a bloody it's good one question. Thing but... That it's cool enough. I mean, you you you're already halfway there with your lathe, so it's going to be some That's wood true. turning, isn't it? Yeah. Um... yeah. <laughs> Went for a little uh, lathe and craft fair at the weekend, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Were you you the youngest one there? Oh yeah. By a long way. <laughs> it was just in a village hall. I wanted to go to look at the uh, turning tools because I knew there'd be some on sale there and it's all, all used and second-hand stuff. And the only set I saw, there was a flat side of chisel in this set. And I don't know who had, uh, who had sharpened it, but I think he must have been a jeweller because it had got so many faces on the front, it looked like a cut diamond. <laughs> <laughs> He'd attacked it from every angle. <laughs> other than that, I couldn't get anywhere near the tools because the, all the other old fellas just uh, just stood in the way, spending forever looking at them. So that's that's the part of the maker community who's not online. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the it's it's that young one, Peter. He's he's on the socials, uh, and he's like uh, seventy-seven or something. And yeah, yeah, he's on this new thing, this uh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be us in a very few years. Like, yeah. Any yeah, anything cool. we are doing is gonna be ancient by the time <laughs> our kids grow up. So yeah. And we're gonna sit here and like I remember that time. Like, oh, <laughs> shut up, Dad. We heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> We've already got it with the uh, the maker community. It's um, you know, it's such a you, it's such an accepting community, but the the age gaps are really broad, aren't they? Diff the different age gaps are quite broad, quite far apart. 
for instance, um, when we were at Makers this year, um, Thomas was doing his whole, Thomas Mellow Loves was doing his interviewing around the thing. And he, uh, I saw him talking to Alice Bagnell and he said, uh, so who are, you most, who are you most looking forward to seeing here and meeting? And she said, Jimmy DeResta. And Thomas said, who? <laughs> I've never <laughs> heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already already got that younger generation that uh, doesn't know what the rest of us have known and have seen. Yeah, Just a different, but, different group. I mean, that's also because of the uh, the bubbles. I mean, my internet doesn't look like your internet. My my view, my YouTube views. <laughs> no, but, you know, what what I consider to be just everyone probably knows this. I mean, I, I yeah. find. Find, it feels like I find, find new people every other week. Um, oh, yeah, they've been online for like seven years and <laughs> have a million followers, but I didn't know that they existed. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird in that sense. Where do you find your YouTubers from, KJ? Is it people you've been following on Instagram and then you suddenly realize they've had a YouTube channel for years? or Some like that, not that much. It's mostly due to some kind of collaborations or people mentioning them in their videos. In some rare cases, it's actually the YouTube algorithm showing me something that actually is interesting uh, yeah. that I haven't heard of before. But yeah, it's mostly referring from other. other I, I get I get mine from KJ and of course the <laughs> al al yeah, algorithm, and then. <laughs> Once every full moon, someone might send me uh, like, uh, "Oh, you should see this guy," and like half the time, yeah, yeah, I already follow. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's mostly KJ. My YouTube, <laughs> my YouTube recommendations are just shot to shit. I'm too easily distracted when I when I turn it on. Oh, there's a motorbike riding on ice. Okay, I'll watch that for a second. <laughs> and, then... and that's that's the thing, though. I mean. Don't be so quick on the bloody gun. Um, of course, if you look over my uh, watch history for the three, four weeks, you could probably get a good feeling of what I'm interested in. But it's like, all right, uh, the last couple of weeks, I have been sh checking out a few specific videos on uh, 3D printers and, of course, uh, ATVs and then Oh, he's into that now. So you're just flooding it. And like, yeah. no, I was going for three very specific videos to learn something and I'm done with that. I I'm not into any of that, but now it keeps flooding me. And it's the same with an online marketplace. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just want something oddly specific. I, I need a triangular a square sh chisel or something and you find it, you buy it, you're done with it. And then it keeps like, oh, have you seen this? Yes, I bought one. You should also record <laughs> that I actually bought it. So it's it's like going online for shoes. You buy a pair of shoes and then for the next 14 years, they keep sending you emails about sales and shoes. Nope, just got them. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, I, mean, it, I mean, this might be a, a thing, but I mean, you have the incognito mode on, on a web browser. Do you have something like that on YouTube as well? So it doesn't, so you can tell the algorithm to don't <laughs> record this or maybe have a training mode that, okay, now I'm watching stuff I'm really interested in. Pay attention. This is what we should be focusing on. You could log <laughs> out, but then you get ads. Uh, the question is, could you on a same? You could pay for a family subscription because then you can have one or two dummy accounts. So then you have your yeah. ones and mm -hmm. then you have the one for oddly specific research purposes. And then, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. need two yeah. basically. Yeah, I saw, yeah. You know, uh, the kids have their own one of those. So it, our feeds doesn't get too polluted. But yeah, then, then you just use theirs. <laughs> then you have to be specific what you want to show up on their <laughs> what I mean their search history is, is crap as well you have to go in and actually okay no I'm not interested in this no I don't need to see more of this <laughs> hide this from me That's I, I got uh, YouTube for kids and I mean it, it's nice because you can't really stumble onto something horrible but 
also the, the the content that is flagged made for kids that you find on youtube kids is crap yeah i mean it's it's mm. solid crap but still i downloaded the app because when my kids want to watch youtube on my phone i, I can't let them use my accounts because uh, then it's gonna be uh, i mean i wish it were bluey videos but it's the most brain dead <laughs> cartoons ever um, and they, they just press on things like raccoons so there's like uh, yeah. once i get my phone back it takes me a fortnight to just get the algorithm <laughs> back to showing me what i want to see <laughs> Yeah, it's really high and low in uh, in our ho household. I mean, some stuff they watch is is brilliant. It's actually educational stuff for kids. They talk about history and that sort of thing. And so there are some really amazing Lego uh, builders on YouTube as well. But then there's such, okay, this is a dog screaming. <laughs> oh, oh, now the the dog. Now it's two dogs. Now it's ten dogs. What's the fun in this? I I can't uh, see. Can you get him to send me a link? <laughs> <laughs> you can get the entire history if you want. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. I I remember back in the early days, the Stone Age of going to school, and of course, it, it felt like we spent an entirety like on the First World War and. You all right for tomorrow? You're gonna read the next three pages, and then you you come back and you discuss those three pages, and then all right, then you read the next for next time. And today you could just go all right, who was that guy? And you can go on YouTube instead of reading. You can just like put that name in, and you will probably find three or four really good educational channels covering that topic. So you could spend on half an hour looking interesting videos and then you can go back to school and you can have a proper discussion on the the topics from various angles and so on instead of like trying to read a, a crappy book that's already 30 years old because the the school can't afford new books every year so so i, I think school today would have been completely different for me at least having that online library of everything yeah then it's just a matter of uh realizing what uh, what sources are credible and which one isn't because you have to be able to discern that by yourself otherwise yeah it's i mean it's the a professor telling you stuff the correct way is the just followed by a video from a conspiracy theorist telling <laughs> you that the earth is on mars uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to keep your head. Yeah, but h how sure can you be that they're not right and he's wrong? I mean, you you shouldn't just blindly accept because he has a, a professorate degree. I mean, <laughs> anyone can get that. You just have to stay alive for a couple of years extra after you do your masters and. <laughs> Did I just piss off an entire profession there? Yes. <laughs> I don't think there's any professors li listening to us. <laughs> and if there are, yeah, please fair, tell fair us. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would love it for, for be some professors listening. But I mean, I, we don't really know who's uh, listening now. It feels like we've got an increase in, in listeners just the uh, past couple of weeks. Uh, thanks to... I guess Scarborough Festival. So, hello, all the new listeners who are still here. Uh, if you've listened this far, you probably like it. I hope you like it. Or if you don't like it, uh, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, this not is us. sorry. <laughs> uh, but I did not. Ooh, I did not think about that. But yeah, it's probably someone has seen all the ads for Scarborough Festival and like, who are those guys? And they are gonna go to the episode at the top. Which is going to be this one? Ooh, is, is or the this one the one that's that. represent? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> this was a good one as well. So yeah, we'll we could see. probably end the main episode here. I think we uh, covered all the good topics, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So off to Scarpa Festival and with us. Yeah. And Next week, live recording. You too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, let's talk about that in the half pint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. It's just 
It's less than a week away, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Good night, people, or good day, or whatever you're having, and uh, see you at the half point. Bye. Bye. <laughs>